students, students, please rise and face the aisle as the faculty and the president's party proceed to the stage. Good morning. I am Dr. Jane Wolfson, Director of the Environmental Science and Studies Program. As Grand Marshal, it is my pleasure and my privilege to welcome you to the Spring Commencement Exercises for the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics. Madam President, the university community is assembled for commencement. I would like to introduce Dr. Marvin Lusky, the 13th President of Towson University. Good morning, everyone, and especially to the graduating class of 2013. I w yes, come on. <laughs> now think about this. I welcome you to the 148th commencement in this proud history of this university. Isn't that amazing? Now, of course, today we celebrate you and your significant academic achievements. But, oh, my goodness, it has been our pleasure to guide and mentor you and participate in this transformation in your lives. Think about, for just a minute, just a, even 15 seconds, what you remember about your first day or your first couple of days here. Your first science teacher, your first lab, uh, maybe where you parked, your first day in the library, what you thought of the campus, 
a new friend you may have met. And then you were thinking, well, four, five, maybe even six years out, I want to have this degree. And you do. And you're here. And we have had so much pleasure being with you. Now, we're going to ask everyone to please stand for the national anthem when we're going to be led in the singing by Ms. Yung Ong Kim, who graduated yesterday with a Bachelor of Music. Everyone, please be seated. At this time, I would like to pause for a moment of silence in honor of the faculty, staff, and students who have passed away this year. Students Kelsey Allen, Devin Spence, Asan Mahmood, and Ryan Bailey, and staff member Larry Long and those who lost their lives in the Oklahoma tornado. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. The flags on display represent the 29 countries of the 70 international students graduating from Towson. Also on stage are flags representing the 77 nations of our current total international population of 570 students. We are so pleased to have each and every one of you in our Towson family. And in addition to the international flags, you're going to see a number of graduates and faculty and staff wearing these gold and black pins signifying the Tiger Commencement Pledge. This is a pledge which is voluntary and reflects a commitment to be involved and active in our communities and to work for positive change in our social and environmental conditions. I now call upon Kevin Kuttner, our newly elected Vice President of the Student Government Association, to introduce representatives from the university's boards. Kevin? Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate this morning to welcome University System of Maryland Regent Thomas Slater Esquire. The Board of Regents is a group of respected and prestigious professionals appointed by the governor to oversee quality, affordability, and accessibility to Maryland Institutes of Higher Education. Mr. Slater was appointed to the Board of Regents in July 2007. He is the founder and principal partner of the law firm Slater & Slater and is also a former Frederick County public school teacher. Mr. Slater obtained his BA from Frostburg State University, an MA from the George Washington University, and a JD from the University of Baltimore School of Law. He is actively engaged in his alma mater, having served on Frostburg's Board of Visitors, Alumni Association, and Foundation Boards. He is also a past recipient of the Frostburg State University Alumni Achievement Award. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please welcome Regent Thomas Slater, Esquire. Thank you. Good morning. I'm delighted to join you and extend best wishes from the University System of Maryland on behalf of the Board of Regents on this exciting day. It's an honor to share this occasion with your president, Marvin Lesky, who is doing a tremendous job leading Towson University. Under her leadership, Towson is expanding its role as a regional leader, both economically and culturally, making Towson University a vibrant hub for the entire greater Baltimore community. Towson is clearly an institution of choice for many of Maryland's brightest students, many of whom are here today. I know even greater strides remain. It's also a great pleasure to be here in this wonderful new Tiger Arena. Most importantly, it's an honor to be here to recognize and congratulate you, the members of the graduating class of 2013. What you have accomplished has taken hard work, persistence, and dedication. Today we celebrate the completion of your journey. I know your family and friends take a great deal of pride in what you have accomplished. They have shared in your sacrifice and certainly should share in your success today. No matter what direction your life now takes, no matter what challenges you will next confront, know that your education here has prepared you well. Towson also takes justifiable pride in serving as an integral part of the social, cultural, and intellectual life of the community. The ethic of service runs deep within the Towson community. I hope you will continue to honor that tradition. Once again, congratulations to all of you, and know that the entire University System of Maryland family wishes you all the best in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Slater. This morning, we are also pleased to have with us two members of the university's Board of Visitors, Mr. Ted Zaleski and Mrs. Myrna Cardin, who will deliver remarks to the graduating class on behalf of the Board of Visitors. The Board of Visitors is a group of professionals who advise and guide our president. Mrs. Cardin is a 1965 graduate of Towson University. She has a long history of community involvement and currently serves on the Jewish Community Services Board. She has been a member of Towson University's Board of Visitors since February 2008. Please welcome Mrs. Myrna Cardin. Good morning and congratulations to you, our graduates, your families, and the outstanding faculty that prepared you for this day. In this age of multitasking, we do so many things at one time and take on so many roles that sometimes we just say we're wearing different hats. So first, I'm wearing the hat that represents the Board of Visitors, as I extend best wishes to you from all of them. We have followed your efforts in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in all of your special interests, and we take great pride. And I'm wearing the hat that identifies me as a Towson University alum, who has seen tremendous changes in her university and proudly identifies with it. And finally, I'm wearing a hat as a resident of Maryland and another hat as a citizen of the United States who welcomes your skills and leadership to keep our state and country moving forward. I often see the list of Towson graduates who are leaders in the field of business, arts, education, research, community activism, government, and philanthropy. Towson has earned the reputation for producing leaders and I look forward to seeing names of people from the class of 2013 included in that list in future years. And you too wear many different hats. Most obvious today is your graduation cap. Along with your gown and diploma, it's recognition of your academic achievement, hard work, commitment, and perseverance. And the hats that you wear that we don't see right now are those of son or daughter, perhaps mother or father, sibling or friend. They are the hats that hopefully kept you grounded during your years at Towson and will continue to be just as important in the years to come. While I'm sure that you've gotten more advice in the last few months than you have ever wanted, 
I would like to bring you thoughts from a renowned literary figure who says it so much more articulately than I ever could. This is what Maya Angelou said in an interview with Oprah Winfrey on the occasion of her 70th birthday. So when Oprah said to Miss Angelou, tell me, what have you learned? Miss Angelou said, I've learned that no matter what happens or how bad it seems today, life does go on and it will be better tomorrow. I've learned that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he or she handles three things, a rainy day, lost luggage, or tangled Christmas lights. I've learned that making a living is not the same as making a life. I've learned that life sometimes gives you a second chance. I've learned that you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw some things back. I've learned that whatever I decide with an open heart, I usually make the right decision. I've learned that even when I have pains, I don't have to be one. I've learned that every day you should just reach out and touch someone. People love a warm hug or a friendly pat on the back. I've learned that I still have a lot to learn. And I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Congratulations and best wishes for a fulfilling life. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Carden. We are also fortunate this morning to welcome Mr. Keith Iwancio, Vice President of Towson University's Alumni Board, who will bring words of welcome and congratulations from the board and the Alumni Association. Please welcome Mr. Awancio. Thank you, Kevin, and good morning to all the members of the class of 2013 and your guest. As Vice President of the Executive Committee for the Alumni Association Board of Directors, a proud member of the class of 1994, and a 2007 graduate from the master's program of the College of Liberal Arts, I am honored to be here today to represent the more than 133,000 alumni who have graduated from this remarkable institution. Each of these alumni has a story to tell of how their success was achieved as a result of their education at Towson. My own story would not have been possible without the education, experiences, and connections that I made here at Towson. You too will have a great story to tell, one that you will be proud to share with future generations of Towson graduates. Your story actually starts today as you join the 3,444 fellow members that make up the class of 2013. This week, 2,684 of you are receiving a bachelor's degree, 742 of you are receiving a master's degree or certificate, and 18 of you are receiving a doctoral degree from Towson University. Your class is 68% female and 32% male. The average age of undergraduate students in this year's graduating class is 23 and of graduate students is 30. The youngest graduate in the class of 2013 is Hannah Carr, who is receiving a bachelor's degree in psychology this afternoon at the age of 19. Our most seasoned graduate, I think that deserves a round of applause. And our most seasoned graduate, who I believe will also be here this afternoon, is Ms. Andrea Gordon, who at the age of 70 is receiving her bachelor's degree in English. Congratulations in advance to both of them. The class of 2013 actually represents 24 out of our 50 states, with New York and New Jersey having the largest number of graduates outside of the state of Maryland. Now, just for the record, 124 of you come from New York, but 206 of you come from New Jersey. Nine of you are actually the sole representatives from your home state. 
For those of you who may be receiving your master's degree today, we know that over 23% of you, just like me, also received your bachelor's degree from Towson. So a second congratulations is in order for all of you. We also know that this class was very engaged and very active as a majority of current seniors and graduate students participated in either an internship or experiential learning project this past semester alone. Additionally, members of this graduating class were involved in intercollegiate athletics and a variety of co-curricular activities. All of this while having an average class GPA of 3.35. Well done to all of you. We also know that most of you will stay right here in the state of Maryland after graduation today because on average, 73% of TU alumni call Maryland home. Although our alumni live in every state across America and 82 countries, Perhaps you will join the more than 6,000 alumni who marry a fellow Towson alumni, or that you may become one of the more than 1,000 alumni who come back to their alma mater in either a faculty or staff position. Today, you become the newest faces of the Towson University Alumni Association. We are educators, doctors, business leaders, lawyers, computer analysts, scientists, politicians, healthcare providers, human resources managers, and much more. Towson University alumni live in every state from California to New York and New Jersey and 82 countries from China to France and everywhere in between. As alumni, we feel that it is our responsibility to give back so that the next generation of alumni here can have the same opportunities and experiences that we shared. So once you walk out of these doors today, remember that while your time here at Towson may be over, you will always be a part of the Towson University family. The Alumni Association will help you stay connected to us, and we look forward to hearing about your accomplishments and your successes for many years to come. On behalf of the thousands of alumni who have preceded you, it is my privilege to congratulate you on your outstanding achievements. The rest of your story is yet to be written. In the months and years ahead, please be sure to share your story with us as you make your special mark as a Towson University alumnus. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you on this very special day. Thank you all. And speaking of alumni, I'm going to ask that if you are in the audience and you are an alumni of Towson University and happen to also be the parent grandparent or great-grandparent of one of these students, would you stand up and let us recognize you? There you go. All right. That's good. I now call upon Kevin Kuttner again to introduce our first student speaker. Kevin? It is now my pleasure to introduce our undergraduate speaker, Mr. Jerron Quinlan, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry. Jaron's hometown is in Eagleville, Pennsylvania. He has a double major in forensic chemistry and chemistry. He is the president of Towson's Forensic Science Student Organization, president of the student affiliates of the American Chemical Society, and vice president of the Towson Track Club. His future plans are to obtain a master's of forensic science degree at Arcadia University in Pennsylvania, including research as a graduate assistant and an internship with NMS Labs. Please welcome Mr. Jerron Quinlan. Thank you, Kevin Kuttner, Vice President of the SGA for that introduction. Good morning, President Lusky, Regent Slater, 
distinguished guests, honored faculty, family, and fellow graduates. When I was first asked if I would like to address the graduating seniors of the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics, my first reaction was, why me? I never expected to be the one to give the final speech of what would be the last day of your college undergraduate years. I asked myself what would be the best way to motivate and inspire my fellow graduating peers. I also asked myself how I would be able to talk in front of a large crowd such as this one. Unfortunately, my parents are in attendance, so I can't use the imagine the crowd in their underwear trick. That usually backfires on me anyway. So I will try a joke that Dr. Hem used right before our molecular biology final uh, with a little personal addition. A biologist walks into a bar and goes up to the bartender. The bartender asks, what would he like? The bartender smiles and says, I'll have ATG, GCC, TAG, CGA. The bartender looks at the biologist and says, I'm going to need a translation. As the bartender starts making his drink, the, bar the biologist then asked, oh, can I have it TAC, CGG, ATC, GCT? The bartender, figuring out his scheme, said to the biologist, no, you can't have it complimentary. <laughs> I'm glad 25% of you got that. <laughs> I can still remember back when I was a scared, timid little freshman. As I had just arrived from Pennsylvania, so Towson was a whole new world to me. I had no friends here, and I can remember sitting in my room for the first couple of weekends, either doing homework or watching TV with little interaction. I remember during orientation that we were told that we could create, that we could create memories and develop experiences that would last us for the rest of our lives. Memories and experiences. Those two words struck with me for the next four years. Now, every convocation speech seems to relate to those two words, but always ends up with the speaker talking about their own experiences and memories. But I've learned that Towson University is a community, a community that is made up of many people, not just one person. These people come from all ethnicities, religions, backgrounds, majors, and everybody has a distinct personality. When one person gains a memory, we all share in that memory. When one person gains an experience, we all share in that experience, regardless if it's uploaded to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or YouTube, or regardless how embarrassing it may be. So today, I'm going to talk about the experiences we all have shared over the past four years and where the experiences will take us. We have experienced a variety of classes offered in the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics, from chemistry to biology to physics, mathematics, and computer science. The classes are as varied as the students that take them. We all experience the late nights spent in the library studying for the big test or final. We have all ordered the large coffee from Starbucks to keep us going through the night. We spent our time with our heads in our notebooks and our textbooks or working with study groups from night to morning. We have all experienced late afternoons spent in the lab, especially those Friday labs. Those long Friday labs when all your friends are wondering why you would rather spend time mixing chemicals rather than going out in the town with them. We've all experienced professors that would inspire us, that one tough grading teacher, and that one teacher that would really push us to succeed. We have experienced that first failed test or lab. By the way, we really hate tit titration, don't we, Dr. Sowers? <laughs> we have experienced uh, completed research in almost every field imaginable. We spent hours writing that thesis or completing independent studies. We've cried when our experiments failed. We jumped for joy when, when everything worked, only to find out it didn't work in the way we thought it would at first. We presented our work with fellow students, faculty, and at national or regional conferences. We experienced internships and part-time jobs. We learned how to make the interview successful. We learned how to make the most of a hands-on experience and how to work with a group of professionals. We took what we learned in the classroom and applied it to an internship or job. Without knowing it, we also became very good at filing paperwork and getting coffee in the morning. We experienced studying abroad in a new environment by taking classes in Italy, Spain, France, Russia, England, Argentina, Brazil, and Egypt, just to name a few. We had a roommate that went to China twice and will not stop talking about it. We are convinced he's packing his bags any day now. We, while abroad, we learned the language, experienced the traditions, and sampled the delicious culture. When we returned home, we shared our experience with, our, with others. 
Over the last four years, we experienced events outside the classroom. We attended sporting events together and watched our Towson football team win the CAA conferences in 2011 and go on to tie for first place last fall. We watched the last seasons of, our, uh, of indoor sports in the Towson Center. Next year, we'll be anxious to see our teams succeed in this very stadium. Together, we welcome President Lewski, the new president of Towson University, who was recently named one of the Daily Record's top 100 women. We joined and participated in various student-run clubs and organizations. These spanned every sort of interest possible. We attended Homecoming and Tiger Fest. We experienced Gagnum Style and the Harlem Shake. For some reason, we let cats run the internet. We made friends, colleagues, and built relationships that would last a lifetime. As you can see, we experienced a lot here at the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics. It's important to treasure these memories and experiences and reflect back on for them from time to time. Wherever you may be headed next, whether it's to move into the workforce, complete graduate studies, or any other path the future may take you, utilize the experiences you have made throughout your stay at Towson University. However, don't forget to leave room for new experiences and memories as you continue your life, as one is silver and the other is gold. Use what you have learned to battle the obstacles that stand in your way, and just remember that Towson University, by raising the bar, has given you a head start in the game of life. What's the difference between school and life? In school, you're taught a lesson and then given a test. In life, you're given a test that teaches you a lesson. Just remember that you cannot study for life's tests, only review the results. The results of life's experiences are what will define your future. And remember, there is no curve. Class dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinlan. Good morning. I am Zachary Miklos, Vice President of the Graduate Student Association. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the graduate student speaker, Ms. Carly Dean, who is graduating with a Master of Science degree in Environmental Science. Carly Dean is from a small town called Northeast in Cecil County, Maryland. After transferring from UMBC, she received her Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Science from Baylor University in Waco, Texas in 2008 and today receives her Master of Science degree in Environmental Science. She plans to pursue her passion for environmental stewardship by working for a nonprofit conservation organization in the Chesapeake Bay region. Please welcome Ms. Carly Dean. Thank you, Zachary Miklos, Vice President of the GSA, for that introduction. Good morning, President Lusky, Regent Slater, distinguished guests, honored faculty, family, and fellow graduates. I'd like to personally thank the committee who selected me to be your graduate student speaker, and a special thanks to Google Calendar. Without you, I'd probably forget to be here right now. But seriously, I'm honored to have been chosen from a truly talented and accomplished group of graduates to speak today. And more thanks are in order. To my wonderful family and friends, I'm honored to be in your lives and to have your enduring, unyielding, persistent, and at times pestering support without which I could not have made it this far. Thank you especially to my fellow Towson graduates who struggled by my side through what seemed like an endless battery of theses, crises, technical difficulties, and philosophical predicaments. For all of these, we are stronger, better, more resilient people. And of course, I owe a tremendous amount of gratitude to the environmental science faculty, especially my advisor, Dr. Brian Fath, for their patience, flexibility, and guidance. Now a little bit about what brought me to this stage and what I've learned. In 2006, I moved to Waco, Texas to attend Baylor University, and I learned that when a moving truck is out of the question, two suitcases packed to the maximum weight limit can sufficiently move you across the country via airplane. One year post-graduation and 100 job applications later, I found that rejection is, while uncomfortable, an essential part of life. And after finding myself with the BS in environmental science, working customer service, and living with my grandparents, I realized that getting back into the school thing after time off is not as insurmountable an undertaking as so many suggest. Before beginning the process, though, I took a job doing trail work in California, and now I know that without a doubt, bears are real. And so I started looking for a fitting graduate school, and Towson was, right away, a clear choice near my home, where my heart is. 
and bursting with phenomenal faculty credentials, the environmental science program immediately garnered my attention. And I believe that the program, fashioned around both holism and pragmatism, has prepared me to think critically and to shift easily from the narrow to the universal and back again. Here, I've had the opportunity to feel a central part of a small program within this great university. I've spent two years working on my thesis on ecosystem services in Maryland, which can be defined simply as everything the environment does for us to sustain and fulfill our lives. I've been so fortunate to present my research at both an international conference on ecological sustainability, attended by delegates from 75 countries, as well as at an intimate ecology symposium in celebration of a professor's retirement from 44 years of groundbreaking ecosystems research. All the while, I have found myself feeling a smaller and smaller part of this world every time I glimpse the vast amount of our collective knowledge that I have yet to learn. This world to which I am greatly indebted and will try to repay through a lifetime of environmental stewardship. And now we come to the inspirational quote that you've all been so patiently waiting for. This was handwritten on a card given to me for my undergradu undergraduate graduation, and I have kept it in mind since. A quote from Dr. Howard Thurman. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go do that, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. I hope Towson University has helped you find what makes you come alive, as it has for me. Congratulations, and good luck to all of my fellow graduates. Commencement is one of the happiest days of the year on this campus. All of the faculty and the, student, the staff and the administrators, we just take such delight in being a part of your journey. And thank you for letting us be a part of your journey. But there is a special group here today that we really want to recognize very particularly. We have one of the finest graduating classes in the country because we have one of the finest faculties assembled anywhere. So I'm going to ask the faculty to stand up and let you all thank them. Faculty, please stand. <clears throat> Also joining me on the stage today are leaders of the university, those responsible for facilitating, facilitating your academic success. You may not see each of them all of the time as you do the faculty and the staff, but I can assure you that they lovingly spend their days looking after your success. I'm going to introduce them, hold your applause until the end, but I ask them to stand as I call them, the vice presidents of the university and the members of the leadership team the Dean of the Honors College, the Dean of the College, the Dean of University Libraries, the Associate Dean of the College, members of the Board of Visitors, the Alumni Association, the University Senate, the American Association of University Professors, the Towson University Staff Council, and then the members of our Student Government Association and the Graduate Student Association. What a group, and it is a joy for me to work with them every day. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the faculty members who are serving as faculty marshals today, student marshals, and the readers for this ceremony. Now, these are faculty members who wanted to be immediately involved with this ceremony. They volunteered to do this. These are the ones who back in the rooms hooded you and gave you a safety pin and a lifesaver and told you how to line up and answered your questions. And they just wanted to be here in a different kind of a way. And so we want to take a moment to thank them as well. Please stand up, faculty marshals, and thanks as always for being a part of everything. <clears throat> You can tell that this is the university of thank yous. There's a couple more to do. One is that it takes over 100 people to put this ceremony together. There is, of course, the commencement committee, and then there are student volunteers, the facilities folks, police, 
bus drivers, food services, photographers, event staff, custodians, groundskeepers, parking, and volunteers as well. There's another group right behind them that got this beautiful arena together. A week or so ago, it looked like we might not be in here. And our staff and all of those that we've been working with said, well, do you want to bet you are going to be in there? So the electricians and the welders and the plumbers and the safety inspectors all joined together to make sure we were here and air-conditioned today. And that makes you, the class of 2013, the first group for the history of the university forevermore, the first group to graduate from this beautiful arena. Let's thank everyone who made today happen. <laughs> Now, graduates, you know perfectly well you haven't been on this journey by yourself. So we're going to introduce your supporters out here in two groups. And the lights up, please. We want to recognize in the first group and ask them to stand the mothers and fathers, parents, great-grandparents, and grandparents of these folks about to graduate. Please stand up and let them thank you. <coughs> And we at the university thank you for placing your children in our trust. Now the second group, and let's try to hold our applause until we're finished, it's going to be now standing up brothers, sisters, spouses, partners, sons and daughters. Keep standing up, folks. Aunts, uncles, godparents, friends, up you go and thank them. <laughs> Madam President, this concludes the undergraduates from the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics and all graduates for this ceremony. Now, may I ask for just a moment, may I ask for just a moment, because graduates, I'm asking you please, sometime this weekend, in the midst of all of the celebration, to sit very quietly for just a few minutes and ask yourselves, what kind of positive change are you going to be able to make with this education? Less than 1% of the world gets a college education. This is a very uncertain world, and we need you. We need your education and your passion to humanity. So please go out as scientists and mathematicians and professionals and be the best kind of person and the best kind of professional you can possibly be so that the world is a whole lot better off because you have been in it. I send you forward because once, many, many years ago, I was sitting in a Towson community commencement, like, just like you are now, and my whole life's journey was ahead of me. I can tell you, anything can happen. So I send you forward with tremendous pride and respect and love. Thank you for being here. Now, graduates, all of the undergraduates, stand up and move your tassel from the left to the right. You are graduated.
Now, will everyone please stand and join Ms. Kim in the singing of Maryland, My Maryland. The words are on page 63. party, the faculty, and the graduates will begin the recessional. I would ask that members of the audience please be seated until all have left the arena. The guests may then join their graduates outside the Tiger Arena courtyard. Again, we offer best wishes and hearty congratulations to the class of 2013.